So today we're going to be modifying this heat pump, uh, this exterior unit, to run on a soft start system. So this heat pump right now, uh, the locked rotor amps or the inrush current pulls about 107 amps uh, at 240 volts. So this is not something you're going to be able to start with a generator, uh, with solar, anything like that. Now, this one does not have the add-on uh, start capacitor. It's only got the start run in there. And so that could have a little bit to do with it, but you're not going to get it down very far. When this kicks in, we can actually see kind of flickering lights in the house. You know, it's, it's pulling more than half of our entire service entrance uh, current. So we want to take this down a little bit, run it on less current, and also extend the life of the unit. Now the way we're going to be doing that is by installing one of these Micro Air uh, Easy Start systems. So the Micro Air Easy Start, this is a nice soft starter made specifically for uh, HVAC units, exteriors, this is all sealed, and this is a a 368. So this is a, a higher current one meant for household units. Uh, they do make them for RVs and things as well. This is again sealed completely, uh, has some nice uh, cable glands on here, and this also has Bluetooth. So we'll be able to see the, the current that it is pulling kind of before it learns everything and after. This is going to have to do a few passes of starting the compressor to, to get it to learn. And hopefully by the end of this, we will actually be able to start this on a moderately sized generator or generator and, and solar inverters. Uh, so first thing, we've got to take off the control panel, the wiring panel in here. And I have already put the connectors on that I'm going to need for this specific unit. But they have wonderful wiring diagrams and the Micro Air website is, is fantastic. It comes with little QR codes that you scan with your phone uh, for your specific model and it'll take you right to the page. So we're gonna be undoing this cover plate and putting a meter on it, turning the unit on and seeing what our before is on our inrush. And then we're going to install this on there per the instructions. Uh, I do have to punch a hole in the bottom. I don't have an extra hole here. So I've got a, a kit to punch a hole in the unit for uh, another one of these little cable glands to seal everything up. And then we'll just be mounting this on the exterior of the unit over here and seeing what we get. So let's get started. Now, in addition to the online, uh, the website that shows these units, a lot of times on the inside there is also a connection diagram like this one so you can just kind of verify that this matches the the guide that you're using on micro air site for how to connect it uh, make sure this matches your unit and that all the wires you think you should have are there and you know what you're connecting to Okay, now what we're going to do is put this meter on a max hold uh, amperage, select the range manually because we know about how much this is going to try and pull on there, and we need to be as quick as possible. If you're just trying to see what this says on the screen, you're not going to be fast enough. Um, a lot of these meters also are not fast enough unless they are designed for capturing inrush current. So we're going to put this on one of the legs coming in uh, for the contactor, and do our settings on here, set it to max hold so that we can see what our, our max uh, peak value is. And then we're going to kick this on. Uh, it's smart thermostat, so we're going to kick it on from out here uh, with our phone and see if we can capture the screen on this. All right, that was actually a little better than we uh, that we thought it was going to be. 
Um, but it is possible that the meter I have is just not fast enough for that initial inrush current. So let's get this unit put uh, put on there. We gotta go start by punching a hole in here and running this wire in, and then we'll make our connections. All right, now all this is is a hole punch that will go through, and using this hydraulic ram, it's just gonna pull a, a nice, perfect, clean hole for us to get our cable gland in. Um, you don't need one of these, it just makes a lot cleaner of a hole, and I have it for some other projects, so I'm gonna use it. All right, we've got our unit uh, wired in. Uh, everything's connected uh, per the diagram and double and triple checked. Our cable gland is nice and tightened down. We've got our unit sitting over here for now. We will uh, fasten that to the side of the cover later on uh, once we know everything works. And we're just going to turn the power back on to the unit at the disconnect and see if we can get this thing connected to the app and, and see how it's running. All right, so this is the first pull on this. Um, it has not learned anything yet. Compressor fired up. And so far, our reading is actually 42.9. Um, now, this is significantly faster. It's got built-in uh, data on it, and it's saying that our last peak was 58.3. So that is still significantly lower than what we were seeing before the unit without it learning anything. All right, guys, we're going to get this mounted up, uh, get this closed in, and come back. Uh, after this has had some time to, to kind of learn and do a few starts on its own, and, and we'll see what we get. All right, we've had some, uh, we've had some time to, to start this up. We've had a total of 15 starts. Uh, five of those were learned starts and this has actually gotten it down to 38 and a half uh, amps uh, at the last peak start. So unfortunately right now I, I can't really meter it uh, starting because while the one zone of our of our system is not calling for cool uh, another zone is, so about the time I went to start this, it, it kicked on with the second zone. But there really is not a point in, in using the other meter right now, uh, other than kind of a worst case scenario. Uh, this one right here seems to be pretty accurate, especially since it's built into the unit that needs to run everything. And apparently it's done. Um, <laughs> So we are about 35% better off on, on the overall uh, peak current draw. That puts us down somewhere in the ballpark of 9,000 watts, about 9 kW, uh, to start the unit. 
and we're down around 10 amps uh, continuous usage at 240 volts. So around uh, 23 to 2400 uh, watts. So, so far I'm extremely happy with this. Uh, the unit seems to start a little quieter too. It's not sounding like a baseball hitting the side of the house when the, when the thing kicks in. But overall, it, it seems to do really well. I will have to, to mount this unit to the side, probably using screws uh, with all the sun and rain and everything here. I don't really trust uh, the double-sided tape, especially since uh, what I put on there has already kind of fallen off. But it looks very, very promising, uh, at least from what we've got right now. And this is going to be a big deal, not just for taking down a little bit of the, the inrush current on the house in general, which theoretically will help with the other appliances and things, but also in the future, uh, we've got a couple of inverter generators that we're using for emergency backup and then uh, solar um, inverters that all of that combined will actually give us somewhere in the ballpark of like 13, 14 kW uh, starting wattage. So more than enough to start this now, whereas before it would be a little bit, uh, little bit iffy. Uh, so looks really promising. We don't have any of the stuff in yet as far as the solar uh, to be able to actually test this right now. But we wanted to go ahead and get this in, get it working, and make sure everything was, was doing what it was supposed to do, especially since this seemed a little bit hard to start in general. So, so far, you know, with, with it only being in for a few hours, I can't really tell you longevity or anything, but I know a lot of other people have these and, and seem to really like them. Uh, based on what you've seen, if you're not comfortable doing this kind of electrical work, have a professional install it. That's all I can really say. Uh, it's not super complicated, but if you are not the kind of person that likes doing wiring and is very comfortable with it uh, and knows how to work in a safe manner, just have someone else put it in. But if you're trying to run this on a smaller whole house generator, on solar inverters or anything like that, uh, this may be a good way to go for you. Uh, so far, it seems like it's a great way to go for us, far better than a a hard start kit um, and we'll we'll see in the long run so thank you guys for watching like subscribe and hopefully we'll see you again soon with another video